Hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor here for episode 66 of the show. Got a few stories to talk about, some automotive manufacturer news, and see what's going on in the EV landscape for this week. First story I'm going to talk about quickly is Ford's announcement. They came out and and, and it's an interesting announcement because in the way that it reads is that Ford is is going to is building basically the largest EV charging network in the US, which I think is slightly misleading from the fact that I don't believe they're actually building anything. What I believe they're doing is they're amalgamating or they're working with Green Lots and Electrify America to uh, institute something what they call the Ford Pass Charging Network. And it's basically similar, I think, to what a lot, a lot of the other vendors have done where they've um, you know provided some sort of membership, which is back-ended by one of the existing EVSE charging uh, network providers. So either ChargePoint or Flow or EVgo or whoever it is. And I believe that's a similar occurrence here. So Ford is going to provide some charging memberships to owners who buy electrified vehicles from Ford when they could find some, when Ford actually has something to sell that's uh, more electrified than maybe just a plug-in hybrid um, and uh, they'll have an app and all that kind of stuff that they can use to um, to access it and they may get some free uh, you know charging for the first couple of years not sure there's no details on that but um, you know the announcement talked about the Ford Pass network will include more than 12,000 charging stations with a total of 35,000 plugs in the US and some parts of Canada as well there's a Canadian component to that um, so again, it's a little interesting of an announcement because I don't see Ford actually out there putting shelves in the ground and building, uh, you know, chargers. I'm sure their dealerships and uh, some of their their you know offices and their their uh, elements that Ford owns uh, properties may have level twos installed and this kind of stuff for public use. But beyond that, I, I can't see Ford actually digging, you know, uh, putting shelves in the ground and installing six figure EVSC uh, charging infrastructures, uh, you know, Chatham CCS combo systems. Uh, so. So uh, anyway, I mean, it's good that Ford is doing something, but just be a little bit careful. And if somebody has any more information on this, if they actually are uh, building their own infrastructure and paying for that, I'd love to hear from you. Staying on the charging infrastructure news, Ionity in Europe, which of course is growing uh, like rabbits basically, um, has now opened uh, fast, ultra fast chargers in two more countries in Europe, Scotland and Spain. Um, and that's increased the total number of stations that they have installed to 156. Um, in Scotland, they're getting six Ionity stations, and in the UK, there'll be 40 of these uh, by the end of 2020, by the looks of it, and Europe will have a total of 400 by the end of 2020. So within the next year, there'll be a, quick, a huge ramp up on the Ionity stations. Excellent for them. That'll help uh, further any barriers to EV adoption in Europe that people have by having more infrastructure to choose from. The Honda, of course, this week the Tokyo Motor Show is going on, so there's a lot of stuff happening from that auto show. And Honda made an announcement about their e-technology platform uh, movement that they're doing. So we've heard about VW's new ID movement and some of the other manufacturers with their electrification plans. Well, Honda's calling it um, e what did I say? E-technology. I <laughs> had to read that again. Um, and it's a brand for all their electrified products. So it's not just cars, but it's also inclusive of motorcycles and power product ranges. Remember, Honda makes a bunch of these uh, power products, you know, generators and all this other kind of neat stuff um, that, they, uh, that they've invested in. And they're going to look to electrify a lot of those components. So the Honda E-technology will first be introduced in the all-new hybrid only model, which is called the Honda Jazz in 2020. And uh, it's it's going to be signed as an EHEV, standing for Hybrid Electric Vehicle. Again, I, as you folks know, I'm not a big fan of hybrids only. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of something that has a plug. So, um, And that's also uh, Honda's announcement to accelerate their electric vision strategy for the European market. They want to electrify all mainstream models by the end of 2022. Well, good luck with that. I don't really see that happening. That's pretty aggressive, but we'll wait and see. And uh, coming out with six electrified models, including this E, this Honda Jazz. Uh, so they have the Fit, the Honda E, of course, which has been all over the place. Uh, the, they have a couple of scooters uh, called the Benley and the Giro or Gyro or, or Giro E. And then they have some portable uh, uh, power products like their uh, LibAid, their mobile power pack, power pack exchanger, and some other stuff there, and home charging stations and all this other stuff. So, I mean, good to see Honda finally jump on the bandwagon and get a little more serious of electrification uh, as the movement has gone past them and they're running like stink to catch up to it. So hopefully they'll come up with more 
battery only uh, products as including vehicles uh, and anything with a plug of course kind of moving away just from normal hybrids that we've had for quite a long time and getting something with a plug but at least it's a step in the right direction i tweeted a couple weeks ago about the 2020 chevy volt uh, sorry chevy bolt that was uh, announced some some minor touch-ups for the 2020 model year of the bolt uh, basically a range increase um, to uh, and it's basically it's a battery cell upgrade so they've increased the pack capacity to 66 kilowatt hour uh, to give it an EPA a leading range of 259 miles or 417 kilometers again that's EPA uh, and as I've said most uh, owners that I meet generally get better than EPA ranges uh, on these vehicles which is good so they boosted the range a little bit I don't think they've done anything uh, on the exterior or the interior if they have I can't see where it is and their price uh, remains about the same so you're getting a little bit more um, of range for about the same price and the interior seems mostly unchanged as well so it's really just kind of pricing uh, sorry the range capabilities for it and I think this is just a stepping stone to see what will happen in the 2021 model year where a lot of analysts and a lot of uh, journalists uh, and automotive uh, affectionados expect a kind of a big facelift and, and revamp for the 2021 model year of the Chevy Bolt. We'll have to wait and see, but hey, I'm glad that they bumped up the range. The Bolt is a great vehicle doing quite well. And um, in most cases, you can get one pretty quick, <laughs> both in Canada and the US. So uh, if anybody's interested, go check out the 2020 model year Bolt. And uh, if you get one, let me know what your thoughts are. Well, it looks like maybe hell's uh, un frozen over. Who who knows nowadays? Because Mazda has announced their first uh, all electric, battery only vehicle. Hoorah! They finally have woken up and smelt the uh, the coffee. There, uh, they're coming out with something called it's an electric SUV called the MX30. And it's coming out with a 35 and a half kilowatt hour battery pack. And uh, you can now actually start making reservations for this vehicle in Europe, is my understanding. Now, sales won't start until uh, later in, in next year, with a first edition pricing coming in at around just under 34,000 euros. You know, again, another option. Um, it's a, in my opinion, it's about the same size as the MG um, ZS EV that's out there. Uh, that's how I see it as a really small compact SUV or the Kona EV. Um, it's powered by, uh, of course, electric motor that puts out 100, 105 kilowatts of uh, po peak power. You can convert that to horsepower and torque of 265 uh, newton meters. Um, again, about 200 kilometers of WLTP cycle. So that's a little disappointing. And, you know, I think they could do a little bit better now. I think the standard, the bar has been ris you know, raised to that 200 mile you know, 330, 350 kilometer club. Now you kind of have to start looking at that area. And I believe you can build EVs that are affordable with those kind of specs and still make money. So I'm a little disappointed in this. It will have DC charging capabilities, 50 kilowatt. So it's coming with a Chatamo connection. It'll have 6.6 .6 kilowatt uh, onboard charging to give you the four or five hours usual shtick of charging. We'll have to wait and see how this thing sells. It won't be coming out for another year or so. But uh, anyway, good. I'm glad that Mazda's finally jump into the game and that they're getting serious about electrification. Let's hope that there's more product coming from them down the road. And I've been watching, of course, the folks at Unity One, uh, Unity with the Unity One EV out of Sweden. Well, they finally opened up the order books for the Unity One last week, and they're scheduling first deliveries in the mid part of next year, which is exciting. It's a great vehicle that I've been following the progress on. Um, you know, it's a it's a it's an all electric three seater, so more of an urban kind of mobility aspect to it. And it's available only in the UK and Sweden for now. Um, they will be opening up more markets across Northern Europe within the next few weeks. So stay tuned if you're in some of those Northern European countries that may be interested in the Unity One. Stay tuned for announcements for them. Just check out their website. But right now they've got more than a thousand customers that have put money down uh, to be a deposit to be on a waiting list uh, within and within three days of launching that. So that's pretty good. Pricing um, is going to be. Let's see, in the uh, UK, it's fifth, It's f starting at 15,100 pounds, so really affordable. And that's uh, including of the grant in there as well in VAT. In Sweden, it's going to be 224,000. Um, uh, gee, I forgot the currency. Is it Krones? Uh, Krones? 
Konos. I'm going to screw that up. I'm going to get I'm going to get some comments on that. But the Swedish currency, I forget. Um, so that seems reasonable. And globally, it'll have a, a starting price of about almost just under eighteen thousand euros and just under twenty thousand dollars US. So again, we're getting into that affordability aspect, which is what I like to see. Good on Unity One. Um, again, if you have one on order, let me know. I'd love to hear how that order process is doing. And they're going to be offering, I believe, uh, before you finalize your order you're going to be offered the opportunity to take one on a test drive and go actually physically see one and touch one and smell it and all that kind of stuff so i'd love to hear uh, people's reactions because i haven't seen the vehicle up close at all i've only seen it from afar in videos and, and press releases but uh, i'd like to get your feedback and let me know what you think and good luck to unity i really wish them all the best well, here's a vehicle that I'm really super stoked for, and that's the Volvo XC40 Recharge or all-electric version, finally, of the XC40. Uh, you know, as I, you, you watched on the Polestar uh, show that I did a few episodes ago and my coverage of, of the Volvo Enterprises, um, you know, they make good cars. There's no doubt about it. They're solid vehicles. They may not make a ton of them, but they make good cars. And I don't think, and, you know, the XC40, the 60 and 90, I believe, is their lineup on the SUV side with the XC40 being their entry-level SUV does quite well i see a lot of these vehicles here in canada uh you know and, and in north america we are a pretty good suv market and that xc40 and 60 fit a nice sweet spot especially the 40 well it's great to see that they're finally coming out with an all-electric version it's an all-wheel drive um, now these are built on the similar platforms that polestar is using for the polestar 2 it's a cma or, or common modular architecture platform that was developed in, in cooperation with volvo and geely which is their chinese manufacturer chinese partner there i'm very excited to see this xc40 the recharge is the platform is the nomenclature naming convention that they're giving to their new family of electrified products the recharge family so i like that um, it's going to have a frunk which is pretty unique uh, for something like this it won't be big but hey it'll have a frunk because again when you get into a common platform and you build these bigger skins like in an suv package you have a bit more room from where the motor is over the axle you've got much more space than you do on a more subcompact or a compact vehicle sedan or back where you can you have the room to put a frunk in and and expand more storage space so this again is going to have 300 kilowatt uh, of performance of uh, you can do the conversion to horsepower 660 newton meters of torque just under five seconds zero to 60 that's pretty snappy for a little suv i like that a uh, combined range of about 400 kilometers in uh, wltp so let's say 375 380 on epa right now battery capacity size is 78 kilowatt hour um, battery uh, will be capable of up to 150 kilowatt CCS charging, fast charging, with 11 kilowatt onboard charging for overnight of about seven to eight hours of uh, charging. If you're going for empty, nobody really goes to empty anymore. And a uh, good size trunk and uh, a little blurb that the little stat that they put out here is uh, 1,500 kilograms of towing capacity um i don't know when this is coming out they 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 talk about next year they haven't really given any specifics on first shipments but because this is on a, on a very similar assembly line as is the uh, the current uh, gas versions, I don't suspect that this is going to take very long to actually ramp up in a production if they're if they're not already producing some right now, some pre-production models. So I should I would bet that we'll start seeing these at the roads by the mid part of next year, maybe a little earlier, maybe a little later. But uh, good day on Volvo. If anybody's got one on order, I'd love to hear what pricing is because there's no mention of pricing in this thing, and that always throws me for a little bit of a loop on affordability. I'm hoping that this is kind of fairly reasonable and they don't spike it too much, but. Uh, We'll wait and see. But good on Volvo. It will be an excellent vehicle. Now, a lot of people have watched my Kia Soul review from a few episodes ago. And I, if you haven't heard, I'm enamored with the vehicle. I was pleasantly surprised on it. Well, a little bit of bad news is that they're just not going to be able to bring many uh, in the near future, specifically to the USA for some reason. I'm not sure why there, this article mentions USA, but um, Kia USA has confirmed that it doesn't look like the new Soul is going to reach USA shores for another year, not in not into uh, the 2021 time frame or not till the 2021 time frame, which is a shame because it's a great vehicle. They're, they're citing difficulties, of course, in battery supply, which is something we already know for, for the Nero and for the Kona people because Kia and uh, Hyundai, uh, Hyundai, however you want to say it, Hyundai, they share the same um, uh, uh, manufacturing facilities and uh, supply chain. So we do know that the uh, batteries are constrained and there's also shortages of electric motors. Now I'm here in this article so that's something i hadn't heard of before 
But no surprise, again, as all the industry starts ramping up, we need that whole supply chain to catch up, and that will take a year or so to flesh out. Um, so it's the, the, the U.S. version for U.S. marketplaces of the Sol AV is slated to arrive sometime um, in 2021. But although they're throwing a little bit of doubt in that as well, that that could change. So it, it could take a while, which is a shame because it's a great car. It does come in two varieties, as I've mentioned, a lower range and a higher range version. And it looks like, uh, I'm not sure if the lower range version is impacted for the U.S. showers or not. I know you in Canada, you can get you can get both of them because I've seen both of the versions on the road already here in Canada. Um, but so I'm not sure why it's U.S. focused only. This could this could escalate into a little bit bigger of a geography uh, impact so i'll have to wait and see but anyway i'll keep uh, tabs on this and if i hear more information i will let you know so at the tokyo motor show the area uh, was announced and it's kind of a cross between a uh, you know dna of a leaf and a rogue or kashkai uh, vehicle so a little bit more of it of a suv ish for sure um, not much other than some flashy pictures and some press releases and all this mumbo jumbo about intelligent mobility and everything which is great nissan but you really got to start coming out with more more hard specs on this stuff um you know because it leaves everybody for speculation and we don't like to do that so because there's no disclosure of range it's expected that, or speculated that it'll have around 480 kilometers or 300 miles of epa range which would be excellent if it did there's no mention if it'll have active thermal management for the bms or not i suspect it will i suspect nissan is going to move forward on their thermal management um uh, uh, not issues because that's not the right word the leaf is a great product for the areas that it works in and and i've had discussions about this many times so i won't go through it again but you know for for solidifying their future progress in all electric vehicles they need to get into an active cooling an active thermal management uh, solution for sure uh, they are sticking with chatamo again i talked about chatamo and, and mazda so that ain't going away anytime soon and and i've talked about reasons why um, so it's an all-new EV platform by the looks of it. Uh, uh, it doesn't say if it's going to be modular that they'll be built, be able to build other vehicles on this platform. I suspect it will because that seems to be the trend for automobile manufacturers is build a standard platform and, and build options in different models based on that. Um, uh, it's going to have cars. They did mention it's going to have over-the-air updates, ProPilot 2, um, self-parking, all that kind of stuff, vehicle to grid because of the Asian markets, all that stuff. So... Um, yeah, that's about it for this. Really, there's not uh, supposed to be presented fully. Uh, so this is a concept type of vehicle. We do know, though, that we're seeing more concept vehicles be more like pre-production prototypes almost in some cases, especially when they look really good. Like they look really normal, not this silly, you know, futuristic stuff with doors opening in weird ways because uh, that won't hit the roads. But this uh, is supposed to be presented in next year at some point in a full pre-production pre platform. But just the, the pictures and everything that they have here, it looks pretty good to a uh, to a fairly close pre-production or production base, I would assume, just by looking at it. Um, so anyway, if anybody's got anything to add, message me on comment on the YouTube. But uh, keep your eyes on where Nissan's going on their electrified platform because they did say over the next few years they want to bring about another eight electrified models including both plug-in hybrid and battery electric vehicles uh, so let's wait and see what happens and finally just wanted to show you a quick video here of um, my uncle Johnny a lot of people have seen my uncle Johnny show up in a couple of my shows here and there um, he bought a Nissan Leaf uh, 2018 40 kilowatt version uh, a few months after I purchased mine he picked his up in September of last year I got mine in May and um, he had just asked hey can uh, can he provide a quick one year quick review about his vehicle and his thoughts so here's a video check it out Hey guys, just a quick update. You've seen my Uncle Johnny appear in some snippets in some of my videos when I went to get my leaf and a couple of other videos. He's come out to some of the events that I've gone to as well. Um, I asked him just to get his opinion on his first year of ownership on the leaf. He got his a few months after I got mine and he's just passed the one year mark. Uh, what do you think of your car so far? I don't really good. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't, you haven't driven too much, right? No, I don't, but I have over 21 on the car. 
just 2,100 kilometers in a year. So he's a certainly an idea candidate for, for electrification, got rid of his gas car, only does commuting around the local city that we live in, um, and can actually is conveniently allowed to charge in his condominium. You live in a, a condo, yeah. in underground parking, and there's a 110, 120 uh, volt uh, plug that's right next to his parking spot, right. and he's allowed to uh, plug in basically for free and charge. Yeah. Yep. And it's been yeah. working good? Oh, yeah. I tried that one... Once every two nights he charges it because he's only doing, you know, not a, a lot of, just some short daily commuting around the city in the Nissan Leaf, which is a perfect uh, use case for the Nissan Leaf. You don't have to worry about temperatures and battery degradation and all that stuff for any of those. You wicked worriers out there that want to do a thousand kilometers in a day, Leaf, the Leaf 40 at least might not be the best choice, but this one certainly is. Uh, anything else you want to add about your experience so far with your electric car? So far it's going great and I never go back to get car ever again. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, once you get into an EV, folks, uh, to get back into a gas car is very disappointing. Once in a while, I have to drive my wife's car. We need to switch cars for certain reasons, and it's not very pleasurable. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, now that I've been driving my Leaf for over a year. So anyway, thanks for dropping by and sharing your experience on your car, and I'm glad it's been a great experience. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Excellent. All right. Well, hopefully this helps you folks. Well, I hope you enjoyed that quick video from Uncle Johnny. He certainly loves his car. That's it for episode 66 of the EV Revolution Show. I'm done already. I want to thank everybody for watching, of course, and please continue to uh, put in comments and feedback on YouTube. I much appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I would ask you to, to do that and pass the word around. Uh, don't forget, you can click that bell as well to get automatically notified when new episodes come out, so you don't have to go chasing and looking for that. Uh, so I thank you for that. Also, always humble thanks to my Patreon supporters, um, which uh, I'll acknowledge for that will be coming up uh, at the end of the closing comments uh, and I've actually changed the way that I display that information where I've put uh, actually uh, people organize them by Patreon contribution amounts so uh, I thank you very much for that so give you that recognition if you choose to support me on Patreon that would mean a lot to me you know even a cup of coffee uh, the price of a cup, cup of coffee a month uh, don't forget fully charged live I've been talking about this now for a couple of months Austin Texas February 1st 2nd of next year it's only a few months away I'm going I'll be there here's the discount code of course to get 15 percent off the ticket price go check out their website for more information and if you are going please look me up because i will be there uh, so again that's it for episode 66 of the ev revolution show i want to thank everybody for taking time out of their busy schedules uh, we had our uh, our canadian election this past week and even though it looks like the election numbers were slightly down at least a lot of people went out um, we have an interesting government uh, we'll have to see how that plays out but it does look like from a EV perspective and a climate change that we have a lot of the same programs that we've already had that are going to remain in place so that's good if you're a Canadian looking to buy an EV and you want to take advantage of that federal $5,000 incentive looks like it's not going anywhere so good for that but I'll keep everybody posted so again until the next show please everybody stay safe and I'll see you when I see you thank you very much bye bye